Hello, my name is Jared Quinn and I am the UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. I'm very sorry I cannot join you live today. I was asked to say a few general things about independent living by Enel and Validity and I'm very happy to do so. I do so with a little trepidation because we really haven't made as much progress as we could have and should have in the last few years. So my first point is that institutionalization, to me, is segregation in its most extreme form. <coughs> Why do I say this? I say it because to me, the key norm in the UN CRPD is actually Article 5, the prohibition of discrimination in the form of segregation. You don't even need Article 19 to establish this point. Secondly, I think personhood is the lens through which we should view and parse Article 19. Personhood is the very foundation stone of the Convention and encoded in Article 19 is the idea of home. Very simple idea. A place of seclusion, of reflective space, a place of privacy and intimacy, a space that reflects back or sense of self. I've heard it described as the scaffolding of the self. But it's also a pathway to public space, deep connections with the community. We are, after all, all of us, a reflection of the depth and breadth of our human connections. Our home invites others in as much as it preserves and protects our private sphere. It's simply inconceivable that humans, including persons with disabilities, can develop within the four walls of an institution, no matter how small the institution is. Always remember also Article 8, sensitising the population at large to the rights of persons with disabilities. Do you really think a congregated solution achieves that? I very much doubt so. Third, law, third of all, in the past, segregation in the form of institutions was considered a satisfactory policy outcome. That time has gone, long gone. I would suggest that Article 5 on ending discrimination in the form of segregation says so, with no exceptions and no mental reservations. Article 5 is the essential backstop of the CRPD against segregation in its most extreme form of institutionalization. So I would suggest an Article 19 contains the positive side of the philosophy of home. It points the way forward. Of course, it means undoing decades, if not centuries, of investment in segregated solutions. Of course, it means reinvesting in community supports. By the way, this is woven of the same cloth as the debate about the development of non-coercive community-based supports for persons with mental health issues. And I applaud the launch of the WHO study on this point last week. It's also part and part of the revolution in service paradigms that is long overdue in every corner of the world. We see very interesting positive trends nowadays toward the personalization of services, the devolution of budgets, and indeed even the movement toward platform-based services with promises as well as risks yet to be explored. Increasingly, we do have the means to make this a reality. And crucially, and lastly to me, all of this means, Article 5 combined with Article 19 combined with Article 8, not spending one penny on recovery funds to refurbish the past in terms of institutional solutions and settings. This is critically important as we go forward. Building back better must mean a frank acknowledgement that what we built in the past was not fit for purpose and we need to radically change gear into the future. I wish you well and I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak, albeit via video today.